but I'm now joined by Gabriel Unescu from Edinburgh in the UK. And um, if you've been a part of this broadcast uh, for many times, you might have recognized that we already broadcasted him on stage in Barcelona, the best of Barcelona sessions. You were there with the state of the art session talking about uh, Norman Thermic perfusion. Yes. And yesterday we discovered you back here in, on stage again in an elevator pitch session. Yeah. Where you took one minute to convince the audience to share your full story. Did you get the additional five minutes? I did, and it was quite fun, actually. It's a, it's a lovely pitch you have to make, and um, we had some interesting data. Yes, because let's share. What was the topic of your uh, paper you presented? So, there? just to put things into context, we've got a lot of new technologies here at the Congress, and that's fascinating to see. And um, our interest has been normal thermic regional perfusion, where uh, you actually take perfusion into the donor. And that's probably a game changer in terms of uh, results. So what we showed yesterday is not only you increase utilization and outcomes, but actually you reduce the cost and it's, it's very cost effective compared to some of the more expensive technologies which are perhaps used as um, single organ perfusion. Yeah, because what type of technologies did you compare to start with? Well, we, we, we compared with what happens at the moment in terms of um, complications and outcome, because at the end of the day, if you use a technology, no matter what that is... And when you say technology, you talk about ex vivo perfusion. Exactly. Exactly. So whether you use ex vivo or you use normal thermic regional perfusion, you really need to show improved outcomes. But in the current climate, money is very scarce, so you need to show that it's cost effective. Yeah. So that's what we did. We compared what we do at the moment with what would this new approach um, give us. And, and can you share a little bit about your research setup? How did you set out to compare these two scenarios? So, w this is a two center uh, effort essentially looking from Cambridge and Edinburgh. And we looked at our data and then we involved some health economists, some patients, and um, we collected data over a year. So, then we, we calculated the costs. It's been a very, very busy and very uh, difficult exercise to gather all the costs, but it had to be accurate to convince people, and particularly they the um, paymasters, the, yeah, the health so, so care uh, providers. Exactly, and I think calculating the cost is a meticulous task, but it's yep. possible because you can just go through the steps yep. and, and label costs to them. But you talk about cost effectiveness, so yeah. you also have to kind of put a value on the or benefits. The exactly. how, how do you so, value outcomes? Well, so what we value outcomes is different from what health economists value outcomes, is, okay. is completely different from what patients value Excellent. as an outcome. Yeah. But for tricky this, exercise. It is a tricky exercise. But for this particular um, exercise, we looked at qualities. So quality of years uh, saved yeah. provided by the procedure and the cost per quality. Exactly. So just to give you an example, in the UK, the government is prepared to pay £60,000 per quality. Okay. Up to that value is what is effective. And, uh, and above that? And above no that is no more. So um, we did the calculation and our price came at 13000 per quality. Wow. Compared to Six. other technologies? Well, we, we don't have the comparison because no other technology has done that yet. You can just show <coughs> that it's a really low, relatively low cost for extra quality of And that qualities. is for a 10-year yeah. horizon. And again, the data is based on liver only, and we have not accounted for better outcome with the kidneys, more kidneys recovered, and pancreas. So when you add this on, probably it's a lot more cost effective. Wow. And, and if you go back, so th this is the core result throughout this process. What was your biggest surprise? The biggest surprise was the magnitude of the effect, and uh, it, particularly when we only focused on livers. So it's quite difficult then to say it's not, shouldn't be implemented. I think it should be the standard of retrieval for all DCDs. Yeah. Um, from an economic perspective. From, are there, are there no, medically any yes. other drawbacks or is it all just it's, green lights? It's not economic, it's just, it's also outcome, it's also a number of organs recover, so you transplant more people with better results, basically, and that's what matters at the end of the day. Um, patients won't necessarily look at the cost effectiveness or the value. Yeah, They're the society in, will. The society yeah. will, um, but they will be interested in, am I going to get a better organ? Yeah. Am I going to get more organs so more people are transplanted? So, Gavi, how come this is not yet common practice everywhere around the world? Well, like any new technology, it needs to be implemented safely. And I think the message we, we got in this Congress is, of course, people will be eager to try this, that, the other. But at the end of the day, it needs to be safe. Because if you do not do it safely, you end up with major problems. And it's a, it's a detriment of everyone else. Exactly. Um, so I think it'll, it'll come. It's common practice in the UK or becoming common practice. It's more common in Spain, France. 
Um, we recently trained the teams from Norway, Sweden, so people are seeing the benefits and they're coming to us. To so so you are time. literally on a mission, on a tour, like we're <laughs> on, on a, a bike, bike around, yes. around Europe to, exactly. to get everybody on board with this. Now, I'm, I'm curious, what if, and I hope, we meet again in two years in the Congress in uh, Milan. Yep. What will you be working on next? What is the next step for you? I think the next step for me is uh, on a number of levels, but purely related to technologies is how do we decide uh, which organ needs what approach and how do you integrate the various approaches in situ, ex situ, um, into, into delivering a better organ for the patients. And of course, how do you assess the organ? So it all comes together. Mm -hmm. um, so I think the next years will be fascinating in terms of delivering a number of trials, yeah. in terms of delivering new results and allowing us to compare some of these wonderful technologies that you've seen here. Oh, very exciting. Thank you for yes. sharing this with us.